So, another episode of Chef Chat, uh, number 24, and it is with a businessman who I've long admired. He's not a chef, he's not even a restaurant owner. He owns the very successful Fatoni's Barbershops in Galway. He has five shops spread across the city. He's a very cool guy, he's a very successful businessman. He is Mr. John McGuire. John McGuire, thanks a million for meeting me. No problem, pleasure. pleasure. Um, so, uh, the last couple of days I was kind of thinking about uh, questions to ask you and kind of looking into your story a little bit. And the one thing that kind of uh, that came into my head was I would love to meet the guy that, you know, you before you opened up here, you know, the, the, young, yeah. the young fella that before you became, you know, the, yeah. the businessman. Okay. What, what type of person was he like? Were you, uh sociable, wasn't very mm. academically minded. I grew up in uh, Balna and Mayo, went to St. Muradick's uh, secondary school there. Um, good social life, you know, plenty mm. of pals, hanging around, plenty of interaction, messing about, enjoyed people's company, was a good talker. Um, I wasn't academically minded, school okay. wasn't for me. Yeah. So uh, I left school after my junior cert. When I was 15 I moved to Galway, took a summer job, uh, hairdressing and apprenticeship. Just took a job doing anything just to get out of Balna for a while, yeah. with the intention of never going back in September. Mm -hmm. And um, I had no intention of doing hairdressing full time. Uh, I always enjoy getting my hair cut in a local barbershop, O'Rourke's Barbershop down in Balna. Get my hair cut every two weeks, I always enjoy that, but never thought of it as a career. And the plan was once they went back to school in September and I didn't have to go back, I was going to travel the world. Yeah, okay. You know, supposed to be living on a tropical beach teaching surf <laughs> lessons. <laughs> Not Lisbon, because <laughs> you're staying the tumor will go, it wasn't the master plan, but yeah. it won't, what's for you won't pass you, you know? Okay, and like, um, like uh, you know the kind of old adage of the, the idea that entrepreneurship is not taught, it's kind of born into you. Yeah. Uh, is that something that you would agree with? Or? Um, I don't think so. My parents had their own business, they had yeah. a shoe business in uh, Balna, and uh, it was very successful. Uh, and they worked constantly at that. You know, that was all they did. But I think if you're passionate about something, something you believe in, you become entrepreneurial with it because okay. you're just feeding your passion. You're doing what you love. You know, the old saying is, you know, do what you love and you never work a day in your life. You yeah. know, I fell in love with hairdressing. Not so, the hairdressing was good, but it was a bit, it was difficult enough working with ladies every day. They were very demanding, yeah. you know, it was very hard. So I thought the lads was a bit more relaxed. So I got into the barbering side, but I went back down to my old barbers in Balna and Mayo for a couple of months. And I did a bit of training with him and I came back to go with him and started working in Galway in barbershops around town. Okay. So, um, no, if you're, you don't have to be entrepreneurial. If you're doing what you love, you'll, you'll excel, excel at it and mm. you do well at it. So. Okay, and, and at what point then, like, because I mean, the, like you're st there's a lot of barbers out there that, yeah. you know, that become bar and they like it and they, you know, they make a, a living off it, you know. Mm -hmm. But what point did you kind of think, Okay, I want to have my own places. So I did a hairdressing apprenticeship for about three and a half years in different salons around Goa City. And uh, then I worked in a barbershop in Balna again for a short while. I came back again. I worked in a barbershop over in the Goa Shopping Centre. I was there for about seven and a half years. And that's where really where I went my trade mm. and uh, got passionate about what I was doing. But I didn't like the style of work that we were doing. It was very intense. It was get them in and out very quick. And I soon realised that there was probably a, uh, an opportunity for... A, more higher end barbershop say experience, a better experience. Yeah. I knew I could do it better. So I okay. started talking to customers of what why they came into our shop yeah. and your customers will tell you everything that you need to know to be doing well in business. So when I was talking to them I found out what they needed and what they wanted and the convenience of parking and hence we ended up yeah. in I had the idea in my head, I was throwing around for a while about a bigger barbershop with a space in it. I wanted more like a gentleman's club, like yeah. a lounge, yeah, yeah. Or back or whatever else. And uh, kind of Fat Tony's grew from there. Okay. I had a friend of mine who was in um, marketing and media in Dublin, um, Gabriel Capiche Design, and uh, he put, he had, I, I told him about this idea I had, and he put the nickname on me. Fat Tony, years yeah. back, I was a Guinness drinker. I like to think I was Italian when I had a few <laughs> pints on me. Uh, he came up and said, you should call it Fat Tony. And so okay. from there, it just evolved and snowballed. Okay, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, when I was about uh, two, years, two years old, my mum my often tells me a story that 
I was sat in, in your, right. you were cutting my hair yeah. and you were telling her that, you know, you're thinking about doing your own thing. No and way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's come full circle. I know, yeah, it's funny. And your mum told you that story? She, yeah, she's yeah. often told me that, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So if you talk to your, your customers, will tell you everything, yeah. you know, if you talk to them and, uh, you know, they're passionate about, they care about getting their haircut as well, obviously. Mm. You know, they probably care more so about some of the barbers doing the haircuts. Okay, like, yeah. You know? So they'll tell you what you want to know. Yeah, you know? okay. And, um, That's mad. yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> Um, when you then, so you, you decided, you know, you would, you would do Fat Tony's, like you did something that, that, wa that was kind of like, um, that wa like I'm not trying to blow smoke or nothing, but like it, it wasn't around right at, at that time. It was very unique what you had done, no? I suppose a uh, traditional barbershop would have been quite small, a small yeah. unit in town, pokey, not very clean or hygienic, you know, it was, a, it was an old man's barbershop, you know, yeah. but uh, I wanted to do something, I wanted more space, a bit of comfort. I was working in, a, the shop I was working in for those years was very tight, the customers were sitting right behind us, very yeah. big room, it was very claustrophobic, uh, there was no space and so I wanted to do a bit bigger. And I realised if you moved a little bit outside the city centre, the rates and the, or the rents were lower and you get more square footage for mm. the same price you pay for a smaller unit in town. Yeah. So we came out to an industrial estate with a small retail park in it. Uh, outside of town, and we got a unit of 2,000 square feet for the same price of uh, wow. uh, a lot smaller units in the city centre. Yeah. There was car parking outside, so there was a uh, reasonable enough footfall, there was a big population of uh, workers in the estate, so we had a clientele there already. Yeah. But the main thing was it was convenient. You could pull up outside, get back in the car and drive away again. Okay, yeah. And, um, so like okay, so you, you, you did that, you, you found it kind of found a niche in the market if you will yeah. or a, a certain yeah. area. But it's been like you've yeah. you've had this for nearly twenty years now. Yeah. And you're still you're still kind of on top of your game, you're still the in many ways the leader. So why has no one taken you out, if you will, like uh, I suppose first and foremost, I suppose like I was saying, passionate about what I do. I still okay. love what I do. I yeah. enjoy coming into work every day. Uh, and then it's surrounding yourself with good people. Okay. Which is everything. Keep people who are passionate about what they're doing and enjoy what they do. I say to every uh, new staff member that we have coming in, uh, if you get up in the morning and you say, geez, I don't really don't want to go in here yeah. to work today. Stay in bed, don't come in. Because your work colleagues and I will feed your negativity that don't want to come in, but yeah. more so your cust customers are going to feed us. Okay. If you don't care what you do, it's a very personal thing getting a haircut. Yeah. You know, there's very few other occupations where you get your run your fingers through a gent's yeah. hair like oh, that's very personal as close you can get like so i mean you pick up on the negativity or the positive vibe if someone wants to be there or not so it's good but uh, first of all surround yourself with good people who are passionate yeah. about it i do take a lot of inspiration from other barbershops social media has allowed yeah. us to do that yeah. other barbershops and see what they're doing and pick and choose what they're coming from and likewise they see stuff that we're doing they get in touch with us how's that working out for you think we're doing it in our own shop you know so um, I suppose just for your, our own interest as well. Yeah. Keep pushing it. Of on. course, yeah. Good, yeah. Yeah. So you kind of touched on it there, but uh, that idea of competitors. You know, some people in business when like they 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 don't like competitors, and then some people take inspiration. Yeah. Where where is how, how do you view competitors like? It's good. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind it at all. I'm always uh, I I know every barber shop in town. There's very few of them that I don't speak to or that I don't have any communication with. So I make it a point to call them into them. Make it, oh, we're all in the same industry and we're all passionate about it. Once they're doing, enjoy what they're doing, I've absolutely, and they're good at it, I've no problem with it. It can only push you on to do better things. Um, I, I would encourage them and talk to them, but I wouldn't be concerned about what they're doing. I only okay. focus, I learned a long time ago, just focus on what, what you're doing yourself. Yeah. And get on with it. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing. Okay. Just, Keep grafting at us, you know. Yeah. And okay. It's, you're, you're not their responsibility. They're not your responsibility. In what they're doing, you know. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just focus on your own. You get very distracted if you're worrying about what everybody else is doing, and you lose sight of what you're doing yourself. So um, let's go back a, a, a little bit to when you opened up here in Lisbon, your first Fat Tonys. Yeah. Uh, just bring me back to the kind of the, the pre-opening and the challenges you faced, and what was in your head with what you wanted this place to be. Um, well, I had sketches done out in my own mind of what I wanted the shop to look like and what I felt it should be. Um, it didn't actually turn out like that. Now it has, in time it has evolved over. But um, originally, I mean, this was the unit next to the barbershop was, um, uh, it was an insulation sales place, so those partition walls and everything yeah. else. So I was in here, finished up the job in town, knocking walls, yeah. uh, trying to get things set up and 
calling in every favour I could to get the thing done up. Um, but the main thing was the fact that we didn't have, going back to your competition, we didn't have any competition on this side of town. Everyone else was in the city centre, yeah. so we were unique. It was niche and that's part of it already. Okay. You know, so there was parking outside the door and it was yeah. convenient. And, um, I have a business partner involved in it, Katrina. She works and manages our own more shop. Um, it was originally just meant to be two of us, starting yeah. off on four chairs. Uh, the okay. original plan was never to have what, 40 something odd staff now at the moment. Yeah. Um, it was only meant to be four chairs. And for us, we know it's fairly quick, we're going to need to take on more staff. So we had the yeah. four chairs working full time then. And then, since this is an opportunity to expand there, yeah. we have the space. Let's do it. Okay. So um, that evolved into a um, a chair barbershop inside. We also do men's grooming. That came on some time afterwards again, which was unheard of when we started off. Yeah. We thought we were crazy. <laughs> but uh, it's taken the step, I suppose, taking the leap to have the faith and confidence of doing it. Yeah. Um, my wife came in, she nearly started, she wasn't even my wife at that stage, she said, you'll ruin us, it's a cave, it's too big a unit. Uh, people thought we were doing pizza, we were, there's another well named uh, pizza That's right, shop yeah. in town, Fat Freddy's, That's right, doing yeah. pizza. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, you know, there was a lot of ins and outs with it, you know. It was okay. a big step to take. We have an awful uh, attitude, I think, towards failure in Ireland. Yeah. I don't think in the States now it's a totally different perception of ours, but uh, take the chance and do it. And if mm. you fail, you learn more in that failure than you ever did of being successful. Yeah. So we've all had our failures, I suppose. It's what you learn from it and take from it. And then in time, you like to think it'll come back to you and say, right, okay, I learned. You put things in place that you learn from that failure. You know, so yeah. it's about taking the step and having a go. We have an online and I heard something. Uh, I read something uh, yesterday about that the Chinese takeaway sales are down because of the Chinese business. And I know that's a mad out thing to happen. And that sometimes outside influence can affect yeah. businesses. Yeah. And I often think like say a uh, funeral home, these people are going to die, so that's always the business. Yeah. But uh, people are always need a haircut from the barber. Yeah. So is, yeah. is business always steady for you? Uh, well, during the recession from about 2007 onwards, there for a couple of years, uh, those guys coming in every week getting a haircut. There were laborers who were on sites and they were, you know, they were flash, flushing cash. They were coming in every week for a haircut. Yeah. Um, okay. And that kind of disappears. All those guys immigrated that weren't even in the country anymore. And then the guys who get the haircut on average every four weeks, yeah. pushing it out to six weeks, or the wait for the special occasion it was a wedding, a Christmas, or yeah. yeah. a bank holiday. They were saying our business drops by over a third during the recession. Um, we had to close a couple of shops with a few on um, franchise things and closed and moved on. And it's totally understandable. Um, but yeah, we were hit hard by over a third, down 33%. So it shows how severe a recession it was that yeah. it comes out to lads getting a haircut for 15 euro a year, but they were putting it off to that extent. That's how great people were. But again, I think coronavirus is strong, everything's going to hit us. Corona beer uh, said that their sales are down every cent because their name is associated with the virus. Pennies were saying during the week that 40% uh, of their stock hasn't even left China for the next season, so their, their shelves are going to be empty. Let's go back to the social media side of things, which is a small world now, like it needs to affect everything. It's the far side of the world, it affects everything on the other side of the world, you know, yeah. so it's a small community that appreciates it. And um, when you opened in 2003, yep. um, social media d didn't exist, right? It wasn't a thing. So what, how, how did you get people in the door? Uh, I suppose it was word of mouth. Um, we had uh, quite, a, uh, quite a strong customer base from the previous shop that okay. worked in some yeah. clients would have known that. <coughs> I suppose local newspapers, Go Advertiser and uh, kind of Tribune, bits and pieces yeah. like that. Flyer drops, um, because we were a bit of a gangster team, Fat Tony, yeah. we had uh, mafia pictures around the place. I used to get casino chips. Oh yeah, with, uh, I remember them. Details yeah. on it and money off deal on it, and I used yeah. to hand them out to people with the thought that they'd hold on to them rather than a piece of, fly of paper or yeah. flyer, they'd throw them away. But a casino chip, it's something yeah. people to hold on to. It. So we were always coming up with different ways of trying to get people know, let them know where we were. Okay. But uh, word of mouth, this business is everything. You know. All right. Okay. And now, obviously, you're you're very strong on social media now. Mm. Um, is is that a big part of the business? That is, yeah, I think you always have to have a presence on it. Um, it's something I enjoy doing. I've got a great, 
a couple of guys doing the social media for us. All the barbershops contribute to it, but I've uh, one guy in particular who sorts it all out. Okay. Great at yeah. filing videos and everything else. I'm a barber. I'm yeah. not a barber. I'm not an accountant. Yeah. I hire an accountant to look after the accounts. I hire someone to look uh-huh. after social media who's capable of doing it. Yeah. You know? um, can't be all things. Okay, and, and on that point, there's a lot of facets to this business, right? It's not just about cutting hair. Yeah. Uh, do you, like, is there any particular areas you'd say, I'm good at that, and I'm maybe I'm weak at that, that other side, or even yeah. when you were starting off? Or? Accountancy. Okay. <laughs> I'll be weak at it, yeah. Learned uh, a few uh, costly mistakes with that, you know, yeah. doing uh, revenue and everything else. Yeah. You fall behind, you let things slide, you don't come on top of that. So, uh, <coughs> I suppose you need to recognise what you're strong at. And put, but what you're not strong at then if you can bring people in to okay. take over that role and to do it yeah ideally that's why you can't always afford to it and the funds aren't always there but it's uh, certainly worth it you know okay um it does a hit, a hit the bottom line of the business the profits of the business or whatever it's, but it's not all about yeah. profit you know okay. i enjoy employing people yeah giving people a job and people are like-minded and passionate about what they're doing yeah you know? so what um that's just on that point again like uh the idea of when you set up business that it's uh, the kind of the cliche businessman idea is about profit it's about money mm. and that's all that matters is like where how important is that for you now like? um hey, listen i'm not independently wealthy whatsoever yeah. okay. like you know this damn old money in my bank account or whatever it's a, we've got a huge uh, staff we've got about 40 employees across five shops mm. and the coffee shop here we probably don't need that many but we're providing a service um they're good people yeah. um our tagline is don't be a dick, yeah. <laughs> you know, we have it on the wall, like, so um, I enjoy employing good people, yeah. it gives me more satisfaction than anything else, okay, yeah. and uh, getting people in, and I'm very proud of the reputation that Tony's had, when some of the new staff come in with us and uh, say they were out the night before, and they're having trouble getting into a nightclub or somewhere you work, in fact, oh, ah, Tony's go on in, yeah. that makes me prouder than anything right, else, okay. I enjoy that, that's it, it's, it's profit is uh, beneficial and helpful and every yeah. business needs it but yeah. it's not the all and all once everybody's comfortable and getting on with things i'm not buying a yacht or driving around a flash car or anything else <laughs> like that but uh, we're comfortable you know, okay. job satisfaction is most yeah. important than anything else. and would you say that the most important aspect uh, to the success of your business is would, would that be staff or is oh yeah 100%, really yeah, yeah. okay such a personal business yeah you know you're only as good as your last ca- haircut okay and every barber has to work with each customer like you know so yeah. i mean it's it's everything we're labor intensive uh, business i need a barber to do every haircut yeah i need multiple barbers to do multiple haircuts mm. so they're everything they are fat tonies they are what makes it the reputation that it is